If, like me, you think your problems are overwhelming, then look at what other people have to face. Every successful person has faced difficulties in their life and career. My guests will share with us the challenges they have overcome on the road to success. Every week we'll follow their story right here in Life with me, Patty Boulay. Hello and welcome to Life with me, Patty Boulay. Well, my guest is Sir David Amos, Member of Parliament for South and West. He is my favorite MP. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Gotta say that. Not say just that because. <laughs> no, no, no. Okay. This is special. He is my favorite okay. MP. I say it again. And not just because he cares about the welfare of the young people in his constituency, but he makes everyone he meets feel so at ease. And this year, Sir David is celebrating 35 years as Member of Parliament. Congratulations, Sir David. That takes Thank my you. breath away. I can be an MP <laughs> for a month, let alone 35 years. Now, I'm, I'm just thinking, as you are so lovely and so always, every time I see you, you've got a smile on your face, you walk into a room like a hurricane, <laughs> and you get me to sing every time I see you. But to be that nice and be an MP for this long and remain that nice, there must have been something in your life that, because I believe the nicest people are the ones who've been through a lot and they appreciate life more. Thank you. Well, uh, I suppose uh, out there, there would be people looking at me thinking, your typical conservative MP. Well, if I was true to my roots, I would have been a Labour MP because I was born in the London borough of Newham the area which returned the first ever Labour member of Parliament, Keir Hardy. Now, if my children were here, uh, who've been brought up in a, a comfortable middle-class environment, the violins would come out. <laughs> so I was born into poverty, although it didn't seem like poverty then. A little terraced house, which I still own, uh, built in 1878, no bathroom, uh, an outside toilet and the tin bath used to hang on the wall outside. We didn't have a car, we walked everywhere. We didn't have a telephone, we just threw the window open and screamed loudly at one another. <laughs> and uh, we didn't have a washing machine, it was the old scrubbing board. We didn't have a refrigerator, it, it was the larder. But the wonderful community spirit, you mm. didn't have to close the doors, everyone would help each other. And I've never forgotten my roots and I never will so I work in life that we're all as good as each other hmm. not necessarily better not necessarily worse. worse but it's not sort of the position you've reached it's who you are yes and a smile doesn't cost anything does it Patty no it lifts spirits exactly but if you were to ask my wife she'd say ha he's a nightmare to live with <laughs> Well, actually, it's funny you say that because Stephen and I were, my husband Stephen and I were at your um, event at the residence of the speaker, yeah. uh, you know, and, and to hear, <laughs> and to hear, well, <laughs> to I mean, hear the right and honorable John Burko <laughs> speak about you, that was quite something else because he brought out another part of John, which is amazing. You bring out the best in people. I mean, well, we, I think we were just going... <laughs> he get yeah. he get he gets a tough press, but he does, uh, I, know. I, I I know the real John Burko. He slightly eulogised me, but when I go to funerals and I listen to the eulogy, I always think, <laughs> oh well, if only the person was there to <laughs> listen to it. I've listened right. to it, and according to him, I'm a saint. But I'm I'm not really. And of course, what was so funny was. It, I, I had a, a joint event with the 50th anniversary of the Lee Orpheus Male Voice Choir. That's right. Biggest male voice choir in the That's country, right. which I'm president of. So just as John was getting to the peak of how wonderful I was, an 83-year-old chap went bang <laughs> and collapsed. <laughs> and collapsed, so I remember. We helped him a over to the man. chair. Yes. I said, are you all right? He winked and said, David, I just couldn't stand listening to any more of it. <laughs> 
what he said. That's what he said. <laughs> oh, He's alive and kicking wonderful. now. Oh, but, bless uh, him. A bit of fun. I wanted it to be a fun event. It was a fun event. I mean, Anne Widdicombe had us. Uh, I mean, my side was aching. I've never seen that side of her. Well, and you, you've known her for so many yeah, years. Yeah, I mean, I know the real Anne Widdicombe. So um, I pulled up to my house. This was some years ago. And there was all this shrieking going on. So I thought, well, perhaps someone's murdering Julia. So I've <laughs> gone into the garden and there is Anne, shorts and top, running around the garden with a hose pipe, squirting water at all my children. <laughs> I said, what the hell is going on here? She said, well, they were having a water fight. I'm teaching them how to have a proper water fight. <laughs> So she's not grand and pompous. No, she is. She I came noticed, from yeah. a relatively humble background, and um, she she's a good woman in every sense of the word. You know, not entirely understood, but, um, but you know, in politics, I mean, I had a, a short, <laughs> a short time, not in politics, but you know, when um, William Hague was yes, um, yeah. He was the leader of the party. And Anne was very keen on William Hague. Uh, well, I'm not surprised. He was quite, you know, dynamic in a yeah. sense. And he wanted to introduce some ethnic minority. Well, he really wanted to get the voters yes. and let them, you know, yes. just relax the party a bit. And, wow, my goodness. I remember um, he got a lot of stick for that. And I thought, well... If this is politics, because you go in with good intention and the press turn you into, they can Absolutely. easily turn you into a monster. Absolutely. So you, you begin to avoid the people. You do. Okay, you do. the people that you're there to yes. help. Yes. And that's what I noticed in that short period, you know, is how difficult. That's why I said I couldn't be an MP for a month. And of course, when I started, Patty, uh, my secretary had a typewriter. She bashed out the letters. Now, the iPhone, morning, noon and night. night and if I right. read the sort of messages that are posted about myself, yes. then I wouldn't be in a good shape. So, I mean, the abuse that politicians get now. So when a youngster comes to me and says, look, David, I'd like to be an MP. <laughs> How do you go about it? I tell them the downside on it mm -hmm. because... It's it's always been at a cost to your own family, it is. the children, yes. but it's the instantaneous insult you get. Yes. So in in Parliament, I made the point that I do not think that any organisation, whether it be um, the newsprint or other news outlets, should post comments without us having the address and name of the person. Posting these posting comments, it, exactly. they are yes. cowards, frankly. They are because you see what the politicians have been getting for years. Now we get on the internet, on social media, everybody's getting that now. So now they know how it feels. Hopefully, they know how it feels. Except the people who just hide behind the computers you've got and write these nasty MPs things. MPs who've had death threats made against them, and the chap went on trial last week. This was Rosie Cooper. She stood up nearly in floods of tears. I mean, he's gone to prison, etc. But this is Sarah Champions, another one who's got death threats against her. I mean, this is a very, very serious situation. Well, sad. I, it's sad. But I'm but still going to go on smiling. Absolutely. And do the best that I can. Well, exactly. <laughs> well, you see, with this programme, what we're trying to do is really encourage young people to always look on the positive yeah. side. Yes. Because what we've just described is what they get on a daily basis. Because they're now on social media. Okay, people put nasty pictures of young children. I was reading yesterday that the antidepressants are being given to children under 12. And the, the number from, I think it's 2010, I'm not quite sure, was about 900 thousand under 12 antidepressants what's going on terrible you terrible. know i mean what can what can a government do i i don't i you see i'm that's a, a bad question for me because i never think in terms of 
government. I think in terms of government, it's there to kind of look after the ov overall thing, move money from here to there. They're not there to come, excuse me for being crude, wipe your bottom. Yes, yes. You know, yes. and your not to know parents yeah. have to be given the right to, to mm. bring up their children and look after their children mm. because I think that's the problem. Parents don't know whether they bring up the children or whether the government is bringing yeah. up the children or, you know, they, they don't know that. I so, Patty, I so agree with you. The schools can't bring up the children exactly. for the parents. Exactly. The government can't bring, can't up, bring the, up the, the children. No. But what we can do is set standards, guidelines and yes. give advice. And on social media, I feel very, very strongly that we need to protect our children, particularly the small ones, yes. from Facebook, going online and all the other things. Now, we can't be with our children 24 hours no, a day, ca no. can we? So it, it's difficult, but you've got children. Well, tell me I've about got it. I've got five, grandchildren. And, yes. you know, it's, it, it is tough. But I think we... You see, do, do people listen to politicians... I suppose you're looking at wrong. Uh, look, look at the gang culture at the moment. I know. This I know. Is just that is terrible. Well, it's not just at the moment because I think this is something that's been growing. There is a tendency among the human race to want to be appreciated, to want to be seen. You know, I mean, I always say when I listen to women say, oh, men this and men that, I'm thinking, excuse me, a man's basic instinct is hunting including in relationships, what man wants to hang up a chicken on his wall? He wants to hang up the lion that he killed or the elephant's head or whatever. So well Okay. Put. So I always think, even in relationship, I say to the girls, you're just too easy. You're the yes, chicken. He's absolutely. not going to hang you up on the wall. Absolutely. You know, there's so much that these young people have to learn. I mean, people say to me, okay, times have moved forward. Times have moved forward since creation. We didn't invent time moving forward. We never did. But one thing that stays the same, walking the earth as a human being. We could fly higher than the highest aeroplane. We could dig lower than the, than the worms and go under tunnels and the, the sea and everything. But it, until we learn how to walk this earth as human beings, and it takes humility. It's very simple. It takes humility. It's just admitting that you're, there's something greater than you out there, that nobody's better than you and you're no better than anyone. And we're all here trying to survive every day. Patty, I've read your book. Oh, you have? And your life story is remarkable. You triumphed over adversity. In my lesser way, I've sort of come from nothing aimed for the top in a way, with no money, no background, did it. And, and I think where you and I can sort of help is to try and inspire youngsters. Yes. There's no shortcut. No. <laughs> it's hard work, determination, mm -hmm. rejection hurts, but we can't have instant this, instant that. And you know, I, I struggle for the role models today, which... Oh, yes. I, I, when you say struggle for the role models, I agree with you because I did a television program. I was on the panel about role models and I said I don't believe in them no. because you don't know what the person is going to be. No, you don't. In the future. So you, you give this child this role model, 15 years time, he ends up in jail. Yeah. And this child is built up. As yes. humans, we've yes. built up this big vision of this person. Absolutely. You know, so I don't believe in role models. I believe in, in children having the strength, knowing themselves. Because when I speak to young people, and it's not their fault, because nobody's passing down knowledge, hence this program. I am hoping that a young person listening will get knowledge, because I learned everything I learned at the foot of the elders. Okay, not with my age group. I mean, why would I be stupid enough to go and ask someone my age? advice <laughs> very very good point you know they they're the same it's, age as me what do they know i want someone older who's parents, been there yes you know i i think uh, unfortunately our young people i don't know who's interviewing who here sir david <laughs> 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 well i've wanted my own chat show <laughs> no, well, we're just chatting. i do it for much less money than <laughs> 
<laughs> but you know, some I of the just, presenters. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> I just know that you have a heart for young people because, like your. Um, They're a future. Exactly. And, oh. and that is why, Patty, although my office cringes every week, I've got an intern in there, work experience. I know. Just for a few days, because I know as a father myself, if they put it on the CV and it gives them experience, and we, we can help them, we can sort of round off the edges, and I think it stands them in, in it good stead. In good stead. When I did the Royal Albert Hall, I don't know if you came to the Royal Albert Hall, but... I had 15, because I wanted 3,000 gospel singers. Oh, wonderful. So I, I looked at the list and I thought, I want young people to experience this. And I thought, what group of young people would really gain from this? So I thought, drama schools. Mm. And thank God, I went to a drama school and they had, they actually spread around the country. And the head of the school said to me, oh, we'll do the 3,000. I said, no, no. I have 1,500 professionals. Can you do 1,500? She said, easily. But what had then happened is that I had people like Sir Cliff Richard. I had Bernie M. I had Gabrielle. Oh, wonderful. And I had... Um, I wish oh, I'd been there it because was, I wasn't. Oh, it was wonderful. I, would have loved it. I mean, it was just yeah, incredible. I had politicians introduce the and writers introduce the artists. I had children choir. Oh, it was just. But the wonderful thing is, I still meet parents who say to me, "Thank you for that Royal Albert Hall concert because you put it was like a leap in life for my daughter." Because she came out with a CV that says she appeared at the Royal Albert Hall with Sir Cliff Richard, with Gabrielle. I'm going, really? Didn't do me that good. <laughs> but, you know, I mean, that's what it was meant for, to help so them. So, Patty, I think I've shared with you about the Music Man project for people with learning disabilities. Yes, yes. When we had a show at the Palladium. Yes. And next year, we're at the Albert Hall. So these really? are people with mental challenges that when I first started as an MP 35 years ago, I'm talking about youngsters, yes. would have been in straitjackets. Oh, now, wow. through the celebration of music, they're, they're enjoying and their parents and families. And I think if we can sort of share that with young people as well, saying, fantastic. look, with all the challenges that these people face and they can still go out there, you know, tong the triangle whatever they're able to do Fantastic. then what can you do who are able-bodied what can exactly. you do with 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 your life so uh, i it, it, it is a challenge isn't it to find the the pressure points which will inspire these young people you know i mean it's like saying to them go out there and do something good for someone okay they the dopamine we've got to praise getting. them and encourage them yes it's, it, you know, but you get praise. Okay, this, it's, it's very difficult because it's confusing. I used to say to my children, don't ever let me see you sitting down when someone older than you is standing up. Okay, so my daughter comes and says, Mommy, it doesn't work like that in this country. <laughs> so I said, what do you mean it doesn't work like that? You never, she said, Mommy, when you stand up, they take your seat, they don't even say thank you. And she's been to Nigeria where if an elderly person is standing, you, oh, they praise your mother. God bless the mother that brought you up. God bless your family. Oh, your father. Seriously, as they say, thank you. And she said, mommy, it's not the same here. Your daughter's right. We, Patty, we yes. have lost the respect yes. for the elderly. Yes. Now, the Asian community is oh, still fantastic. Precisely. They look after grand. Yes, you don't see them in, in old they people's homes. They help home. one another. Yeah. You'd, you'd absolutely. You don't see they them don't either. expect the state to do it. Right. And they're so strong on education. Yes. So we've got to get that back get as that well, back. Haven't, haven't we, really? Yes. And to sort of get back to how I started, yes. I just want people to know that I had nothing, absolutely nothing. So there I was the age of five, uh, the headmistress asked to see my mother and she was told, your son is nicknamed Double Dutch in school. Had a very bad stir, a stutter, couldn't sound the third, the TH thing, and for two years went to a speech therapist. We walked there, walked back, how now, brown cow and all of that. And here I am today, having survived as a politician for 35 years. Fantastic. So if I could have 
done you that can do out that. of nothing and keep going. I want young people to realise that the reason I'm still hanging on in there is to make a difference. Exactly. And I think youngsters, if they're interested in politics, I'll point out the downside, <laughs> yes, but I'll please. point out the upside <laughs> the as upside, well. Yes. And I hope they will be inspired that it's not just money, position, you can really achieve as a matter this of fact, I believe through nothing. Yes. Just as you have, Patty. Yes, absolutely. From absolutely. From nothing, you exactly. still are this glamorous <laughs> star today. Well, I'll tell you the secret Sing, to that, dance. Sir David. You see, I always look at this as the temple of God. I dress it accordingly. It's borrowed. Because I grew up in the Biafra Wars, you know, and I've seen so many dead bodies. And so I realized how fragile we are how fragile, how quickly we can go, and yet how incredibly engineered we are. You know, so I, I really do appreciate what God has done here. <laughs> and we all need some sort of faith. Oh, boy, yes. That this isn't it. This isn't it. We need... Yes. There's something else. There's something else. There's something else. You know, I always have this saying, enjoy now and pay later. Absolutely. Because if this is it, then what are we going to have on our streets? Precisely. It's, it's frightening. Frightening. Thank you so much. A bit of much. humility. A bit You're of wonderful. Humility. God bless you. And God you. bless you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.